I don't know what I was expecting out of the Raw reunion, but I'm pretty sure it was more than what I got. That's exactly how I look at it. It was not what I would have expected a show to be that was going to incorporate so many big names, so many legends from the past. It was ultimately underwhelming, and for the most part, it ultimately ends up being a gigantic waste of time, which, if anything, is so perfectly fitting for today's modern WWE. Like, I look at the opening segment, and that, to me, kind of epitomizes what this night was. You got a couple of cool things here, but you're like, it could have been so much more, and it just wasn't. You start off with John Cena and shit. The product has gotten so bad and Cena's been away so frequently now that people actually fool themselves into thinking that it is worthy of cheering John Cena. No, you dumb dicks. His decade of doom helped create the problem that we have. He helped put this company in the fucking position it is. Don't ever let him off the hook with that. But even in that case, that fucking walking billboard, that prop. It was striking to me even how much more of his star than he felt like compared to the vast majority of the roster. And shit, he didn't even want to be there. And you could just tell. Like you tell some when somebody has no fucks to give and you can also tell when somebody just really doesn't want to be there. Cena just really didn't want to be there. You could, you could just tell. Like he wanted to be there because it was a big deal and it was good free advertising for him in his movie career, but ultimately he did not want to be there. And even the back and forth with him and the Usos, when they were getting him to do the Dr. Thugonomics stuff, it's like it's one verse, cool line, that's it, can't wait to fucking exit the ring, get the hell out of there. Like, you get teased with something that could be potentially really good and memorable, and then it just doesn't happen. And Rikishi comes out, but he ultimately doesn't do the stink face, he doesn't dance, so that's disappointing. Devon comes out with the revival. And it was so weird to see him without Bubba. It just wasn't the same. He didn't go at any point in time and get the tables. That was odd. It just wasn't the same. So it's cool to see some of these guys, but there were just things about it that really didn't work and was just largely disappointing. And speaking of largely disappointing, because it's entirely disappointing, I know we are in the middle of summer, damn it, and we are in peak Softball season. But by God, somehow, someway, you got to make sure that Psycho Sin was there. How dare you advertise this legend, this icon, and then he's not fucking there? There are people like me that this is one of the preeminent reasons to even tune in Monday night. Yes, it's great. You didn't give me, you minty speed cut piece of crap and all that shit. But I wanted Psycho Sin because he rules the world, damn it. You know who I blame for this? Braun Strowman's dad. It's probably some fucking legend slow pitch softball tournament that they went and fucking dominated. Yeah! It's probably like Braun Strowman's match later on in the night was so damn short. He wanted to get the hell out of there to go watch his daddy and Psycho Sid rule the world of slow pitch men senior softball. I was pissed. I needed Psycho Sid, damn it. And I didn't get it. So the disappointments just keep continuing. Now, if you're expecting me to talk about everything that happened, every segment, every match on this show, you ultimately will also feel disappointed. Just like your girlfriend does if you have one after a romp in the hay with her. But in your defense, who cares? It's about you and getting yours. She's got 15 minutes if you can get yours in your time. And she cannot. That's not your fault. Bitch, that's on you. Anyways, this whole Samoa Joe Roman Reigns thing. I don't get what they do with Samoa Joe. They try to present him like he's serious. They try to present him like he's a big deal. But ultimately, every time he gets into a big match, he fucking loses. And he does it here again. There was no reason to have him lose to Roman Reigns. Why fucking do it? You try to present him as this villainous type of badass, and then he loses. That's why nobody fucking gets over it because of stupid shit like this. Which is a problem that was so prevalent for so many years with Bray Wyatt. And speaking of Bray Wyatt, finally got the chance to go watch the Firefly Funhouse stuff. It was weird and stupid, and I loved every fucking minute of it, which should not surprise any of you. The thing of calling him the Fiend, eh. 
I don't know if he's really supposed to be a drug addict. I mean, you know, um, long term, there's going to have to be something there, more there than the lighting effects in the mask. But this particular segment, leave it to fucking Mick Foley to come on here on a night that's supposed to be about the legends and put over Bray in a big way with, of all things, Bray applying the mandible claw to him. I saw somebody on Twitter talking about hopefully at least Mick got to taste JoJo's uh, puss for having to sell that. All I got to say is what happened if the fingers went into Brown Town? And the answer a lot of you guys would say is it probably wouldn't matter because guess what? It probably wouldn't matter. But the segment worked. It was really cool, especially seeing them apply the mandible claw with the lighting effects and the sounds, the screeching going off. Like that is cool and that is good. But you got a long way to go to convince me that anything is going to be long term different with Bray Wyatt. I'm sorry. That's not being negative, that is being realistic, and that is being honest. Based off of the stupidity of a fucking WWE today, what makes you think that they are going to get this right? What makes you think that they aren't ultimately going to get bored and screw the pooch with this? What makes you think that he won't just end up in the same spot he was for the past several years, six months, or a year from now? Huh? 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 What in doubt with WWE and character development? Assume they'll fuck it up, because they do. It's not that hard. But this segment, isolated in and of itself, was outstanding. As so many other legends are trying to glad hand and do their thing and get their shine and get their spotlight, here's Mick Foley doing the right thing, doing the best thing for business. I always respected that son of a bitch for it. And he probably knew deep down that it's better to do with Bray Wyatt because there ain't nothing getting fucking Seth Rollins over at this point. Jesus Christ! A few years ago, this guy was a highlight of WrestleMania 31 when he cashed in the money in the bank to walk out the champ at WrestleMania. And we are now here. He is the shits. The whole fucking Miz TV segment. Like, who the fuck is going to believe that Brock is a wannabe Seth Rollins? It's so stupid. It just comes across so ridiculous. And it is a perfect example of you can throw a lot of things at a guy. And you can blame all these other factors, but ultimately, at some point in time, if the dude ain't got it, the dude ain't fucking got it. WWE creative and Vince McMahon can't automatically manufacture a personality, mic skills, and charisma out of fucking Seth Rollins. It's like Cena versus Orton during that decade of doom, the reign of the breakfast club, baby. Cena at least had some personality. He had some mic skills. He had some natural charisma to him. Most certainly not to the level of a Hogan or an Austin or a Rock, or for God's sakes, from a pure charisma standpoint, not even the ultimate warrior. But he had some presence. He had some personality, some charisma, some ability to talk on the mic. Randy Orton had mostly none of that. So no matter how much shit you threw at Orton and you threw at Orton and threw at Orton, at the end of the day, it couldn't compensate for the fact that he was just bland and boring as fuck. The ring boner and him looking for gopher holes could only get you by for so long. So what you got here with Seth Rollins? They threw him into this fucking Miz TV segment, and he just looked like a jackass. There's no other way to put it. He looked like a jackass. And then later on in the night when he's wrestling AJ Styles, and you get the clicky DX, whatever the fuck they're supposed to be now, because you just... Fucking, it's DX and it's the click, but they're all together. Who you fucking knows? Just an excuse to have everybody show up. Like, when you see Seth Rollins standing in the ring with them, you realize how ridiculous that looks. You realize how guys like fucking Road Dog and I'll even say it, fucking X-Pac, clown Rollins in the star power in presence category. X-Pac! Who literally has a phrase devoted to him called X-Pac, get the fuck off my TV, has more pop with the fans than fucking Seth Rollins. And it's true. And you could see it last night. It was obvious. Like he's in the ring. And this is a thing sometimes when you bring in legends, some guys rise to the occasion. You feel like, hey, they could belong. And then there's other times you bring in those legends and you realize just how bad things have gotten. And looking at Seth Rollins, you realize just how much he is not equipped to be the guy.
just how bad of a place he is in a, as a character right now, and just how shitty in general the product is today compared to the years gone by. It's absolutely bad. And speaking of that, and guys getting chances and so forth, apparently there was a hashtag going around last night and again today, hashtag give WWE women a chance. Because they didn't get any matches on the show. They were barely featured. I don't want to go there, do I? No, you know what I'll do? I'll talk about that in a separate video. Give them a fucking chance. They've had more chances the past couple of years as in-ring talents than they probably ever fucking have. And look at the shape the fucking company's in! Well, yeah, let's give them even more of a chance. Fuck you! So dumb. Anyways. Like I said earlier, this was mostly a disappointing show to me because you're expecting a whole lot more than what you really got. It was just mostly a typical Raw where you're looking forward to things evolving Bray Wyatt in the 24-7 title. And the rest of it, you just couldn't really give a crap less about. And even the 24-7 title, you knew it was going to be ridiculous and they're going to do all these different things. Fucking awesome to see Patterson and Briscoe and da-da-da-da-da. You know, but it gets a little overdone and, you know... Trying to recreate all these things. Alondra Blaze is going to throw it in the trash can, but then DiBiase buys it off. Da, 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 da. But even then, a way to incorporate a whole lot of legends very easily here, it worked. For one night, it worked. It didn't ruin the gimmick. It didn't hurt the shtick because ultimately, at the end of the night, it's still all tied back to our truth and Drake Maverick as it fucking should have. And our truth, you're in that limo with Renee Michelle. She did not try to jump out of it. She is with you. Put babies in her, damn it! Every time Drake looks at her from now on, he should be thinking about the baby that you put inside her. <sighs> Anyways, on to the closing of the night and the toaster roll. And look, I am not here to defend Hogan. I know I got Hogan on a post on the fucking wall. So be it. It's whatever. I've told you before my thoughts about it. I fucking hate his guts for the fact that he put me in kind of this conflicted state because on the one hand, Hogan represented so much to me in my life and so many things happened because of professional wrestling that all happened because of being a fan of Hogan back in the 80s and da-da-da-da-da. But you know how I roll and I can't, you can't fuck with that. But what really bothers me about it is not that people are going to shit on or hate on Hogan. You don't like him because of politics. You don't like him because you thought he was overrated. You don't like him because you weren't a fan of his work and his gimmick and all that other stuff. Cool. If you don't want to like him because you think he's a racist, redneck son of a bitch, that's cool too. But don't sit there on your fucking high horse and throw all your shit downhill at Hogan. But yet you're praising fucking Ric Flair who newsflash ding dong, dumb dicks. Got some racist tendencies to him too. Ask Teddy Long and ask some others. That's all I'm fucking saying. Oh, and of course, we're going to celebrate because Hogan, even though even there, his promo wasn't bad because it was short and he still looked like a bigger fucking megastar in his mid-60s than anybody on the fucking main roster today. By miles, he got overshadowed by Stone Cold to Steve Austin. The fucking woman beater. How are you going to sit there and get all upset about Hogan the racist, but be okay about Austin the fucking woman beater. If you're going to celebrate Austin, similar to, regardless of whether you believe he did it or not, celebrating Mike Tyson, the fucking convicted rapist and documented woman beater, then why are you going to shit on Hogan? I'm just calling it as I see it. It's hypocritical. It's a double standard and it's bullshit. You want to hate Hogan? Fine. I don't give a fuck. He fucking deserves it. Shame on him for saying that shit and believing that shit and feeling that shit. But at the same token, don't sit there on your fucking high horse and talk about how great and fucking awesome Austin is by comparison or ignore the fact that Ric Flair is a fucking racist too. Never mind the fact that all of us that watch professional wrestling have to reconcile the fact that professional wrestling as a whole and specifically Vince and I goddamn WWE have a long, proud history of stereotypical, prejudicial, racial treatment of their black, Hispanic, Latin, Asian fucking wrestlers. How are you going to fucking sit there? And to me, in the grand scheme of things, racism is abhorrent. Racism is terrible. 
But saying words, in at least today's context, is not as bad as beating on your fucking wife. And especially seeing women sitting there and shit on Hogan and celebrating fucking Austin. You dumb bitches! The hell is wrong with you? You're women too! How the fuck are you going to celebrate the wife beater? All I'm asking for is consistency. Come on. Is that too much to ask? If you're going to shit on Hogan, then shit on Austin too. If you don't shit on Austin, then don't shit on Hogan. If you're going to shit on Hogan, shit on Flair. Shit on Vince. Shit on fucking blackface ass Triple H. I'll look that up to you, uneducated fucksticks. Not to be fair, God made everybody in his image. So he can wear whatever color face he wants to. Oh, but not really. But he could. But not really. But damn it all. Is that too much to ask? But even besides all of that. It was really, truly, truly something to see a guy like Austin be able to command a crowd like that, to be able to own the television like that, to own the ring like that, to own the live audience like that. We just don't know what that's like anymore because we just don't see it. We don't see it. And all of these other companies you might throw up and you throw a name up there, no. The answer is no. It's not even fucking close. And for you to even suggest that somebody, I don't give a fuck who it is, insert any modern wrestler, A, B, C, D, E, or fucking F. You saw what a megastar, a larger than life personality, a household name looks like. And if anything, like you're sitting there and you're watching, you're like, my God. Austin's just rolling off the cuff, and it's great. It's brilliant. It is everything that is Austin. And, you know, he's probably fucking drunk already. And you know he's going to be drunk in the ring. He's going to be even more drunk after the goddamn show. But it was organic. It's, it's real. And you could just feel it like it was just different. And it's so striking. And it almost comes across like I saw some people comment on social media, and it kind of felt like that way. It was like it was the great goodbye. Like, these are the types of times you used to have. Look back on them fondly. But they only grow more faint in their distance from the present. When I see Seth Rollins look like a clown. When I see guys like Samoa Joe being built up to be something to then immediately get beat. When I see a gimmick fucking 24-7 title. And a guy being called the fucking fiend with a crappy ass party city mask being the two most over things on the goddamn show. Like, <clears throat> it felt like in a lot of ways it was a goodbye. It was really closing the chapter on all the great times and memories we used to have. And frankly, we'll never see again. But in the meantime, you can at least count on the fact that you still got this angry wrestling man. You've still got OTRS Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. My God, how bad is Raw going to be next week? <laughs>